Y'all there? Can y'all hear me? Yo, who's there? Who we got in here? Let me see if I can find my own channel because I don't understand this new uh, live stream feature that they got here that they're promoting. Um, oh my gosh. What's happening, y'all? Oh, it says live now. 11 watching. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, and a little delayed at that. Cool. Look, man. Um, you know, what's up, y'all? Okay, okay. Or, 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 riddle. What up, King? What up? How you doing? Oh, man, it says, it says a riddle. <laughs> Quentin Dubois, what's up, family? Kaya's in there. Oh, the cold coach is in there. What's up? Uh, Shannon is in there. Ursula's in there. What's up? Listen, everybody, I'm going to do my best to be a bit more precise. I just completed a stream. I uh, uploaded a video this uh, Tuesday titled 10 Signs of an Unhealthy Relationship, but there are things that I was not able to mention in the video because I don't want my videos to be more than 10 minutes long. And so I ended up having not getting to, to, to talk about some things that I think are especially important to our community, especially those of us who might be dealing with challenged self-esteems, those of us who come from environments that are chaotic, we might not even identify those environments as being chaotic. We might not even identify these counterproductive dynamics in our relationships as being uh, counterproductive. They are just normal. They just, hell, they seem normal to me. And you know, uh, being in quarantine, I, I got inspired to kind of switch up the YouTube channel a little bit and just kind of really talk about myself, hence the title, Advice from a jackass, that's what I call my, my, my channel. And, and I just talk about the things um, that, I per, that, that, you know, that I personally experience. I've made all the mistakes for you and my channel allows me to share insights gained from those mistakes in hopes that it might make your life a little bit better. And in this particular um, video that I uploaded, I'm talking about uh, you know, things that I did that were counterproductive in my relationships and inhibited me from having quality relationships, but also inhibited me from being happy. And then the things that I started doing uh, to undo some of that stuff. And I'm just gonna kind of breeze through it. If you wanna watch the full video, I don't know if I can pin, are, are you allowed to pin comments in here? I don't know if I'm allowed to pin stuff, but here's the link, 10 signs uh, to an uh, unhealthy and destructive relationship. Jax, oh yeah, oh yes, yeah. nicer, Jax, thank you for the words of encouragement, nicer, thank you for schooling me, go ahead and hit that like button, y'all, nicer's like, hit that like button, she, you know, yo, that is so right, I gotta learn to promote this thing, um, um, uh, y'all wanna hear something funny, my, my, my channel been qualified to be a monetized channel, and I just never got around to it, Keeping it 100. I never got around to it. Um, and look, I I'll get around to it one day, but that's not really what this is about. This is about this. I'm going to tell you what this is about. Yo, keeping it 100. I wasn't poor, poor. I always knew people who were poorer than me, right? I've lived in the projects. I've lived in trailer parks and all that stuff, but we always had food. Um, no matter how dysfunctional my household was, we always had food. But what we had in our house that was crazy was... I had two parents who were very dysfunctional. Um, and I had a father who was extremely abusive. Like, when I say abusive, he physically beat my mom, you know. That, that's been happening ever since I was like a, a year or two, you know, as long as I can remember. Um, uh, I also had uh, a mom who wasn't the most emotionally stable, you know. Um, and so there was a lot of dysfunction in my household. And this shit was traumatizing. Um, my parents both big time adulterers, like they slept around a lot. Um, I believe that's what destroyed our family. And at the brown age of 11, my mom took off. I ended up uh, kind of, it ended up being me and my brother. And over time, I became the legal guardian of my younger brother. Um, but those things created these triggers for me. They did, there was some, you know, obviously, PTS, man, PTSD. Uh, I had issues 
that developed from those experiences and they kind of and and and, and they kind of stayed with me for much of my life and so as a result of that here's what happens I find myself in a relationship or I find myself in front of an, a great opportunity and because of my abandonment issues because of my lack of self-esteem because um, uh, because of my uh, poor examples of communication and and resolving issues um, I blew those opportunities whether they were opportunities in love or professional opportunities um, because of the trauma that I experienced in, in, in those periods of my life, I then did my best to, uh, to mask the fear and the insecurity and the sense of inadequacy I developed through, you know, my mom bouncing at 11, it just kind of gave me this thing. But that stuff didn't do as much damage to me as the damage that I imposed upon myself by the way I chose to behave each time those issues were triggered. Meaning, yes, we have childhood issues and that's one thing, but as we become adults and we're still allowing those issues to govern the way we behave and interact in the world, we actually do more damage to ourselves. And I am a guilty candidate of that. That is why my channel is called Advice from a Jackass. In fact, let me tell you what my little slogan is. I say, um, uh, my name is Romany Malco. I'm the founder of The Pep, the People's Empowerment Platform. And you are watching another episode of Advice from a Jackass. I've made all the mistakes for you. And this channel allows me to share insights gained from those mistakes in hopes that it might make your life a little better. We cover everything from entrepreneurship to aren't you going to get out and do some shit and everything in between. You know what I mean? All right. Stop running. Hit the subscribe button. And I'm going to keep it moving. Um, this is, so, so this particular, I got really emotional doing this particular video because of how many things in the video hit home for me, but there were a lot of things that I could not include in the video. So I kind of wanted to just go through them with y'all, you know, live for those of you who are interested and, you know, are down to stick around. Um, and, uh. And here it is. So one of the first things that I wanted to talk about in this relationship, in, in this thing was, is that I was in the type of, like one of the best things I could have ever done for myself. And, and I don't know if I'm, if I'm even on track. Let, let, let me just look through these comments. See what I'm, I'm loving this conversation. Thank you, Kaya. Jax, thanks for sharing your story. Oh, absolutely, Shannon. Thank you, nicer. Um, a marriage of lifelong relationship where both partners stay faithful the entire time is a small percentage. You know what? Listen, all of this is true, but I'm going to tell you what I told my ex. What's the point of finding Mr. Right if all you do is spend your time trying to prove him wrong? I said this in a previous live. I'm not, I'm not gifted like these other dudes. There's dudes out there that was born with two, three penises, nine penises. And so they all around with eight, nine women because they got, they got nine penises to place. I got one dick. I got one dick. And I have been unfaithful. I, I, I dated a woman back in my 20s and I cheated on her. Never cheated again. I learned so much from it. There's a video in my channel called, um, it's called, it's called Why I Cheated. And it explains reasons that people commit infidelity and what I learned from the experience. But what I want to talk to you about right now is why I consistently ended up in dysfunctional relationships, how I contributed to relationships being dysfunctional, why I consistently chose people that were wrong for me, and why I consistently chose environments that were toxic. That's what I want to talk about because a lot of us are doing this, especially coming from the communities that I grew up in. And I'm telling y'all right now, this thing just messed with me personally. It messed with me professionally as well give you a prime example of how it messed with me professionally. I could not be in the pe in the I could not be in the company of people who wanted me to be in their company. I could only be in the company of people who needed me. You get the difference? So the people that were like, "Yo, Rom, come hang out. That's cool." I, I didn't know how to function in that environment. 
I only knew how to function in the environment of people who were dependent upon me, right? Part of that is being the caretaker of my younger brother and, and the guardian for the most of my life of my younger brother. Part of that being uh, 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 my primary caregivers were very inconsistent and didn't really create safe environments for my brother and I. So we had a lot of craziness in our household and, you know, just a lot of unfortunate things happen and we developed very little trust through that. It's very difficult to trust. So as a result of that, I tried to control everything. And the reason I chose people who were not necessarily uh, self-actualized or chose people who were dependent was because in my mind, I had this equation that I could control a dependent person. And the likelihood of that dependent person making me feel abandoned in the same way that, my, uh, that I did when I was a child would be less. I thought, yeah, I, you know, if the person's dependent upon me, they're less likely to abandon me and make me feel that. So here I am in my adult life, in my 20s, trying to avoid feelings that I had when I was 11, 7, 6. Think about that, because my parents dropped me off a lot. So basically, the mind of a seven-year-old is governing my 20s. Think about that. So I'm consciously and subconsciously choosing to be in the company of people who don't challenge me, who don't push the envelope forward. And if I've learned anything on this planet, I've learned that the people who are the weakest, the people who are not quite often the, the people who are not necessarily self-actualized impose the most pain on this planet. They hurt people the most on this planet. And if you want, you want an example of that, just think of Hitler, right? All he really needed was some therapy. Uh, the long and the short of it is, is that I consistently did this and repeated this pattern over and over and over. And it wasn't until my divorce about 12 years ago that I really got real with myself and that's what I'm about to dive into right now. Um, uh, I'm going to dive into that right now. And I'm going to start with, I, I made notes and everything because I was like, I don't want this to be too unorganized. You know how these things can just kind of like straggle on. I'm going to start with some of the things um, that, uh, that, 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 that I messed up, right? And one of the things that I, I, I really did poorly was I, I, I tended to date people who, um, and like wait was waiting for them to change or I would date people uh, for their potential. Not for who they were, but for who I thought they could be. And they got inspired by this idea of who I thought they could be, but it wasn't who they were. And so uh, as a result of that, I became quite toxic in the relationship because I would find people who weren't quite self-actualized uh, hadn't quite found maybe their sense of purpose yet or hadn't quite figured out what they want to be in life or maybe never did. But here I was trying to get them to be something that had nothing to do with them in reality. It was, it was unfair, it was, untoxic, it was toxic, it was, it, was, it was controlling. It was me basically coming into your life and saying, I'm gonna be the savior, I'm gonna help you. And then as a result of that, you're gonna be loyal to me. Now, remember when I told you that we all have some kind of sequence that we create in our head and then we, uh, th that will equate to uh, safety and loyalty? Uh, well, that's what I did. That was my sequence. My sequence was, well, if I help you out really well, you know what I mean, and, and, and I'm the, I become the savior, you're going to be loyal to me. That was the sequence that I was playing out in my head and trying to replicate in real life. Um, it's the silliest thing I've ever heard of, to be honest with you. And I'm embarrassed to even admit that was my life. In fact, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm ignoring y'all in the comments. I'm just trying to keep it on track. Uh, my, uh, Ursula goes, this hole goes deeper than I thought. Uh, Lynn says, Lynn, exactly, exactly, uh, Ursula. And Lynn, exactly, arrested development. Uh, but Quentin, you're right about childhood trauma. But I want to make something really clear. The childhood trauma does carve out a lot of things and adjust and, and, and influences the way in which we deal with fight or flight, but it's the way we choose to behave when that trauma is triggered. 
that imposes the most damage. It's our behavior. It was my behavior. And so when every time I chose someone and dated someone for who I wanted them to be, I was basically recreating a scenario that I knew, I already knew how it was gonna play out. But I was recreating the scenario that I was so desperately trying to avoid. And sometimes it would stretch out for six months, sometimes it would stretch out for years. The long and the short of it is, um, it was extremely counterproductive, it was unfair to them, uh, it was toxic, controlling, and um, it was something that I had to learn not to do. And a big part of that challenge was trying to learn how to be in the company of people who didn't need me, just simply wanted me. You get what I'm saying? Um, another thing that I did was uh, I um, I would, uh, this number, sorry, I'm, I'm looking for my numbers here. I also had to deal with fear of being single. Now, I was never afraid to be single. Actually, uh, being alone comes very easy to me. I have to make myself, uh, uh, I have to make myself socialize. But um, I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read comments and get this out of here. Uh, I had to make myself socialize, but what comes with that is, it's not necessarily fear of being single, but it's anxiety attachment. I had a lot of that. A lot of anxiety attachment. Remember I talked about the abandonment issues? Remember recently I made a video about the uh, emotionally unstable man? Remember that? Uh, and how he might have, uh, uh, he might have uh, anxiety attachment? Well, this is, this, is, this is me talking about myself now. And so what would happen is I'd be in a relationship and when you, when, when, you, when you deal with a sense of abandonment or not feeling safe you know, within your household or your primary caregivers not being consistent in your life, what you end up doing sometimes, it affects you in your adulthood and you become, uh, you are always anticipating the person you're with in your adulthood abandoning you, cheating on you, leaving you, talking shit behind your back. You are, you are always anticipating the worst. Whatever your greatest fears are, you're anticipating them. And so that's why, you know, and listen, I'm gonna be one, I'm gonna be real. Like, you know, I cheated once in my life. I was in my 20s, never did it again. I'm 51 now. And one of the things that for me, I'm very transparent, not just with you, but I'm, I'm transparent with everyone. So uh, I, I've never dated a girl who's like, I need to know you. I need to know the passcode on your phone. I've never dated a girl who was like, you know, I need to know what your password is. But they've all known what it is because I didn't hide it, I didn't keep it a secret. There's nothing to hide. And if someone came at me sideways on my phone, that's just their business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, first of all, I don't know, I got some shit here. First of all, um, that's deep. First of all, it's like I told you in the beginning, I got one dick, I put it where it belongs and then, you know, and then I keep it moving. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, by, you know, but, but by always anticipating this, I would become subconsciously controlling. But that controlling was actually me be becoming clingy. That was, it was really a form of being clingy. And so, for instance, if, 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 if my girl went on a little vacation or something, when she calls me, I'd kind of be short with her and distant. That was me subconsciously, I wasn't even aware that I was doing this shit, but that was me basically trying to deter her from going away in future scenarios. Uh, so, the long and the short of it is, is that with all these behaviors, the clinginess, the lack of trust, being manipulative, being controlling, that's how people who come from my community who never heard of self-actualization, who've never heard of introspection, who've never been given this type of dialogue, that's how they cope. That's why people say, why do women ask for your phone and wanna know you? Because that's the, they've been hurt multiple times, they've been hurt repeatedly, and because of it, that's the coping mechanism that they've developed, is control, their need to control. And that's what happens. Now here's something that I'll tell you that's really funny about control is that if you really take a look at your life, you can't control much. So if you only gravitate, like I used to do, to environments and to things that you can control, 
more than likely, you don't have a very abundant life. If you need to be in control of every aspect of your life, you don't have a very abundant life. You're the hunterer, the gatherer, the mom, the pop. You're everything. And so what I had found is that one of the things that I needed to figure out how to do was to one, get with the person for who they were, love them for who they were, rather than who I would expect them to be, but also allow them to live their life the way they chose to live their life. Um, and the challenge with that is, because of a damaged self-esteem, because of an inferiority complex and abandonment issues, um, I would feel challenged by that independent person and I would have to, and I'd subconsciously find ways to undercut or undermine their value um, and not even know that I was doing it. The reality of it is, I'd be looking at them, not, re you know, why do they do this? Or why do they, don't, is this common sense? What's wrong with them? And be like, when I really took a look at myself, this happened in my relationship. I was like, I do the same shit they do. I just do it differently. I just don't want to see it, but I'm doing the same shit. We're mirroring one another, whether we want to believe it or not. And that was humbling. That shit really, that shit really, really mellowed me out and made me take a deeper look at myself and realize how unfair I was being in the way in which I was treating people. And so, uh, it wasn't necessarily for me the fear of being single, it was the fear of being abandoned. And um, one of the most beneficial things I could do for myself uh, was pursue people, befriend and date people who didn't have anxious attachment, who had healthier relationships with the people who were their primary caregivers who had healthier uh, relationships with their pursuits. You get what I'm saying? They didn't operate from this anxious, needy place that I was operating from. And those people uh, gave me examples that I wanted to apply to my life. I saw their swag, their calm, and the way in which they navigated through the world, and I thought to myself, man, I want to operate, I want to live like that. And, um, and so those role models really helped me carve out a better idea for myself of how I wanted to live my life. And also along that journey, I, I met a lady um, and she was out of my league, y'all. She was older, she was wiser, she was more accomplished, she was wealthier, she was everything. And I was a lot younger and broke as hell. And, you know, she made an effort to include me in her life for two years before we ever started dating. She went out of her way to be my friend, out of her way to eat lunch with me and sit down and talk with me and hang out with me, be at the beach or be, you know, restaurants, whatever, or just kind of sit and chill and watch TV or listen to music. She went out of her way. And that did a lot for me. It kind of, she made me feel as though I was worthy. And it was someone that I actually looked up to. And then we started dating. We ended up dating for a very long time. Um, but that really helped. And so I kind of started trying to make a habit of pursuing friends who, honest to God, just had healthier relationships uh, with the people in their lives, with their family members, healthier relationships with their friends and the way in which they communicated. And kind of use them as, as, as role models. Um, uh, I've got some other things that I also did and I wanna share. Let, let me look at the comments really quick because I don't wanna just be talking to myself here. Uh, question for you, big homie. Uh, did your time in the Marines make you take a good look at yourself, i.e. who am I and what am I doing here? You know, honestly, man, when I was in the Marine Corps, I don't think I ever really stopped to really do any deep evaluations. My deep evaluations didn't really start until after my catalyst breakup. You know, everyone has a catalyst breakup. I don't know if you know what that is, but basically 
You date someone that you believe you truthfully love and what you find out is, is that that person is really just an enabler. You and that person are enabling one another to continue believing the things that you grew up being taught. And enables you to con consistently carry out the belief system that you grew up being taught. The examples you had set for you. And so like my dynamics, the way in which I spoke to her is exactly the way her dad spoke to her mom. And exactly the way my dad spoke to my mom. And so when we broke up, uh, by the way, the way that we broke up was I cheated just like my dad and then told on myself, she immediately went out to exact revenge and she cheated. Listen, all of these, if you don't want this slow motion version of any of this, all these videos are at my channel. All you gotta do is go to my channel right now and um, make sure that you just look for the specific title. You know, why I cheated, emotionally unstable man, 10 signs of an unhealthy relationship. Uh, are you an empath or a sociopath? It's all there, bruh. It's all there. Um, but, um, you know, she went out in exact revenge and my ego was unable to handle the fact that she was cheating on me. I was actually fine. I actually wanted to be out of the relationship, but my ego was extremely damaged. And I really felt bad because of how I hurt someone who was so supportive and loving towards me. Um, but I didn't, the relationship was probably over four years in. I wanted to experience other things. I was so drawn to dysfunction and it wasn't a very, it wasn't a dysfunctional relationship at all. Um, I was just drawn to drama due to my uh, inferiority complex. Um, and so I found ways to self-sabotage a relationship and I did. Um, and it was in, until that breakup, I call it the catalyst breakup because you don't, nicer, you don't just break up with her or him, you break up with your beliefs. Everything you thought about yourself, everything that you believed was right, you suddenly start to question, like, wait up. I did some fucked up shit. What's wrong with me, fam? What, 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 what is my problem? Hold up. And wh why do I believe this? And why do I eat this? Why do I eat this part and people eat this part of the same thing? Like, everything, every single thing catalyst breakup and was the beginning of me rethinking my thinking and really taking deeper looks into myself and really I just started doing sun up to sundown meditations man where I just and for me listen I want to make it clear meditation for me doesn't mean I'm sitting here in some disciplined pose I could just be laying on my sofa looking at the sky all day all day sitting at the beach all day sun up to sundown just sitting still drinking water that stillness, no phone, no radio, no TV, no homies coming over, all day. That, that, change, that, that changes my life every time. I got a whole story about that that I'll share with y'all later. But um, I'm just making sure that I'm not talking to myself. She's like, dude, you are on fire tonight. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, uh, DSB Business says, your videos really bring perspective to some experiences I've went through and learned from. It's helpful getting another perspective. Hey man, thank you so much. I swear to you, uh, it's, it's, it's the reason I do this, fam. It's the reason I do this. Uh, this is hitting me at the right time, Rom. Thank you, Shell. Shelle, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Um, so can somebody just remind me where I was? I want to get back on track because I thought that was an important point. What was it? It was, uh, someone, someone, please. I'm in the comments here seeing if I can, uh, get back on tech. What was I talking about? Frangeliz is in the house. Oh yes, Frangeliz. I thought you, I thought y'all were working out. Uh, someone's parenting autism. 101 says, your YouTube channel is my therapy. Thank you. That, that's beautiful. Y'all hear all these endorsements? Y'all need to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, y'all need to rock these like buttons. Um, yeah, I was talking about these sun up to sun up meditations because after that breakup, I really started looking at myself differently. Like, man, you know, I don't think I'm as well off or as tuned in as I thought I was. And so what I started doing was going to therapy and questioning everything that I grew up believing. And I started kind of unraveling this conditioning that stemmed from my childhood and um, started 
seeing how it related to the way I behaved in my adulthood. And the truth is, that even though I was an adult, I was still carrying out and behaving like a child. Um, uh, and so, thank you very much, uh, Trina, for reminding me. Thank you, Kaya, for reminding me. And that's why I call it a catalyst relationship, because I don't think that I would have ever taken that deep dive without that breakup. And so I truthfully use it. I stayed single and celibate for years um, to just take a look at myself. And they can only do so much work with yourself. But um, for me, it was kind of like an awakening. And it's just been a journey ever since. And in no way am I sitting here telling you that I'm qualified to you know, I'm not here trying to teach. I'm here trying to share. I'm open to other perspectives. Um, I just was hoping that maybe for all the mistakes that I've made in my life, some of you might benefit from some of the things that I learned. Um, um, but another thing that really helped me uh, uh, and really helped my self-esteem and my anxiety attachments, fear of abandonment and all that was rhyme and reason. And what I mean by that, it was just uh, trying to understand what my parents uh, went through, you know, the way they were, what made them the way they were and, and what influenced their destructive patterns, you know. Understanding that really helped a lot. Understanding, you know, getting older and, and growing to understand more about their upbringing and their parents' upbringing and, 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 and and the dysfunction that had been passed down generationally um, played a huge role. Like just being able to develop that understanding. I, I journal about it. I journal about it for hours. My cousin just gave me a book about this thick of, 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 of journals that I had sent her almost 15, 20 years ago, you know? Um, but developing that understanding of what they had been through really helped me develop empathy for them and be like, damn, despite everything that they had gone through, they didn't do bad with me. Given the shit that they've been through, I've heard horror stories about people and children with parents who've come from backgrounds like my parents. Um, so that, that, that really helped. Um, what else? Let me see here. You know, and by, by journaling about it in this weird way, I was kind of like able to reverse engineer this generational dysfunction and just kind of gain some objectivity. And as a result of gaining that objectivity, I just felt less threatened. I felt less threatened. I felt less hurt by everything that had occurred. Um, it was as if like I had been empowered by the information. You know what I mean? I, I think of it now like investigative journalism. <laughs> you know, I was like digging deeper into uh, the psyche of my, of my uh, family. And um, the biggest thing of that whole sequence right there, uh, the thing uh, uh, that was important about that was that I also began to understand a lot about myself. And the most important thing I believe, or one of the most important things was in learning about myself, learning where I was weak, where I was in the areas in which I was kind of underdeveloped, the disorders that I was suffering from, I began to understand more about what I needed in a relationship versus what I wanted in a relationship. You get what I'm saying? So I had specific needs, right? And I had specific wants. But I learned that my true wants were the priority. And so as a result of that, I suddenly understood that for me, not for everybody, but for me, uh, when choosing a mate, when choosing someone to be with, it was more important to me. It wasn't like, it's not how they look on paper is not as important to me as how they live on purpose. You get what I'm saying? And so, don't get me wrong. I understand everybody wants to be with somebody successful and feel like, you know, they're part of something that's, you know, you know, that's the shit. But for me, based on my makeup, what I needed to experience, I, I needed to experience a person that lived a certain life 
in per- w- constantly engaged in purpose. And so uh, things that matter to me is like, for instance, how healthy is their relationship with the people who were their primary caregivers? What degree uh, of love do they experience with those people? What degree of love do they exude? How, uh, c- how consistent are they? Um, how graceful are they in conflict? How do they, how do they process and communicate pain? These are the things that were important to me because that's where I needed role models. That's where I needed examples. Me and my brother were talking last night. We have such a fragmented family. My uncles and my father all died begrudging one another. All of them. Not all. I got one uncle still alive. They died. My, 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 my uncle, one uncle died at 50, one died at 56, and my dad died at 63. All begrudging one another. And I didn't want to carry that. Uh, my dad and his mom didn't communicate much. In fact, she didn't communicate with much. Of the, there was so much drama that on his deathbed, he was telling me about how much she wanted to hurt him. And so it was up to me and my brother to go build families, functional families. And let me make sure I'm not ignoring anyone in the comments. Thank you, Shelley. And so we don't know. We don't have the tools or the examples on what it takes to build a family other than like watching the Brady Bunch and shit. And you know that ain't real. So we kind of at a loss for real love. You know what I mean? We don't, we, we actually, um, give me a second. We just straight up spent many of our years going, I don't even know if I know what love is. Real talk, family love, the tolerance and all the things that you do. And so, we needed to find the people who could give us those examples. And one of the things that I learned in couples therapy back when I was married is that it's very important to allow your partner to influence you. You've got to be open to their suggestions, their ideas, their interests. And um, that's one of the ways that me and my brother have consciously allowed our partners to influence us is what it means to be part of a family. And um, we've learned a lot, and I ain't gonna lie. It's the happiest I've been. It's the happiest I've been. And even still, there's drama, you know? Like, when I say drama, like, I was kind of walking around with this attitude, man, looking at my lady because like looking at her like don't you have common sense? Don't you don't you see these simple things? Don't, don't and and I would really let it get like upset me. And so I kind of had this negative tone all the time. And she kind of told me to kiss her ass. <laughs> and it's not really her nature, but she kind of told me off and I really had to take a look at myself and when I really stopped and thought about it, I was like, "Oh shit." I do the same thing I'm complaining about. I just do it in a different way. I don't want to see that. I want to see her shit. Humbling, yo. And you know, had to apologize and had to apologize, not just with, I'm sorry, but apologize with behavior. And you know, she's even said, she said, I definitely feel a different vibe with you now. And I'm like, I'm glad that you do because what she said influenced me and it really made me take a look at myself. And I think that one of the most difficult things, uh, one of the most difficult things that people, it's most difficult thing for people to realize is they're with somebody for two, three, five, 10, 15, 14 years and they think everything's wrong with this person. They got so much resentment for this person, but what they feel to, fail to realize is there's no way that you could be there if to some degree you were not mirroring one another. And when you mirror someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are emulating one another. 
One of you can be an introvert. One of you can be an extrovert. One of you could be loved by your social, by your social uh, group and the other could be hated. <clears throat> one of you could be very irrational. One of you could be rational as hell. But how you may mirror one another is maybe there's an aspect of you like I may have like a really damaged self-esteem, right? And as a result of that, I overcompensate. I have this inferiority complex, so I overcompensate and pretend that I'm the shit, bragging about my cars and all that other stuff. I could be that kind of person. And I could be with someone who's constantly reminding me that I ain't shit. That person's mirroring me. They're not mirroring my persona. They're mirroring the real me. They're mirroring, they're echoing the voice within me that, I, that whispers quietly to me at night, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. That would be an example, right? And so... I, th I think that when we say we mirror one another, we look for something so much more obvious and blatant, but no, it can, be, it can be as subtle as that. Because a lot of us are operating in our survival personality, meaning the, 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 the personality we developed the moment we were told that we were not adequate. That we were convinced that we were not enough, we became something to prove that we were. So we've kind of abandoned that truth underneath the surface, that true us, and created a persona that was more acceptable. And so the person you're with quite often, and you've completely forgotten who that person was, you've abandoned that kid, but the person you choose is quite often mirroring that little kid inside of you, that little boy or girl in you. Um, right, wrong, okay, I hear you, Coach. All right, so, so, so let, let, me, let me take a break and acknowledge some things here. Uh, Uh, write that down, how they live on paper versus how they live on purpose. 100%. I will. Uh, uh, how, how, do they accept, how do they accept love? Kaya, that's important too. Uh, I seen that video and made me th uh, rethink how I process anger and what's worth getting upset over. Oh, thank you so much, DSB. You are, that's music to my ears right there. Um, Oram, oh, the stories I could share. I bet you, Kaya. Um, someone says, here, here, we all have ancestral legacies that influence us. Uh, for ill and good. It's our responsibility to not let the ill cripple us for a lifetime. Bam, that's so beautiful, M. I love that. Quentin, we keeping it real in here. Jovan, yes, we are. Uh, the cold coach is in here. Life coach. The cold coach is a life coach for real, a real deal life coach. We have to redefine it for ourselves. We do. And what we don't realize is that the way in which we choose to behave every time we're triggered is actually inflicting more damage on a scientific level. Because when we create all this chaos and drama and respond in this fight or flight mode, we're, we're wiring our brains, we're carving these pathways and we're sending, elect we're sending all these uh, signals throughout our brain and it's exhausting. It tears us down, it shuts down our immune system. And so the key, you know, I, I hear people talk about all the work they've done and, you know, and they were a monk and this and that. I'm not a professor, I'm no guru, but I'm like, that's cool. I think I could be really cool sitting in a mountain or sitting in Tibet by myself in a cave. I think I'd be pretty chill. I believe I'm a practical person. My channel's for practical people. The work, the opportunity to do the work is in the moment of crisis. How do you behave? How do you carry out? How, how, how do you behave and, 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 and carry out your duties when faced with a crisis? That's the best opportunity, in my opinion, to do the work. What character do you display in the moment of crisis? You get to do real work then. You know, I can't just, okay, some shit's going down. Let me get a flight to Tibet. Let me go sit in a fucking mountain. Come back and talk. No, I can't do that. How do we deal in the moment of crisis? That's a great opportunity to do the work. And the more you do it, the more you do it, the more you're rewiring so much going on in here. Um, I like that. Apologize with behavior. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Um, mirroring what you may not even perceive. Exactly, Shelley. Exactly. Uh, someone said, put it on a shirt. Um, 
someone says, I got some catching up to do. I forgot. Subscribe to you. You talking some real stuff. Oh, please subscribe. South Central Dreaming. I hear you. What song was that? South Central Dreaming. <laughs> oh, is that California Dreaming? Anyway, um, I have some people to refer to you, though, Rom. LOL. Seriously. Cold Coach. I ain't no life coach like you. I ain't got that. You know, I, I, I ain't up there like that. I'm really just sharing my joint. They could definitely subscribe to my, um, uh, my YouTube channel. And I'm be glad advice from a jackass and I'll be glad to tell them everything that I've experienced. Uh, someone said in the process of rewiring right now, it's real shit. Alex, I'm feeling you. Thank you. Man, do a video on introspection. Honestly, Quentin, all my videos on introspection. Most of everything that I've done lately since quarantine has been on introspection. Um, but there's so many aspects, so many psychological disorders that a lot of us are suffering from, especially coming from the dysfunction that we come from, especially in areas of poverty, because this isn't the dialogue. And when I say poverty, I'm not just talking about black people. I'm not just talking about black and brown people. I'm talking about poor people in the United States of America. Um, in fact, the United States of America is one of the only places I've lived in my life where poverty equates to ignorance. Meaning, if you are poor, you are denied quality education. O only place. I lived in Trinidad and Tobago, and I went to school there, and missed two years of school in the United States of America and graduated on time. That's how far ahead Trinidad had me. Um, so I'm shouting, Lord, trying to get a man to see, understand this perspective has been difficult for me. You gotta turn folks onto the channel though. Um, Someone said, advice from a jackass is the best type. That person lived to tell tales. M, I'd say it with my heart, I really have lived to tell some tales, man. And it's all true. But moving right along, thank you. Um, moving right along, I wanted to uh, uh, get back into it, but somebody kind of helped me where, where, where I, I, I left off. I, I, I forgot where I left off. Let me see um, if I can remember. So I was talking about things that I had kind of done to kind of help me undo that was, yeah, understanding generational trauma and understanding what my parents had been through and where how we had inherited this gave me a lot more empathy, allowed me to reverse engineer a lot of uh, 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 trauma in my family and in my upbringing and um, helped me learn to relinquish the need to control. Because I know for a fact that if I gravitate to environments that I can control, they're very small environments because I, in the reality, in the truth, I can't control much of anything. It's not, none of us can control much. If, if we want lives, abundant lives, we have to relinquish the need to control. We have to relinquish the need to uh, micromanage. Um, so where are we going from here? Good evening from Florida. Tisha D, guess who else is in Florida right now? I've been trying to relay this to a friend for years. Thank you. Um, so moving right along, I want to talk about something else really quick. Um, you know, there are a few things that have been instrumental in me feeling better, being more confident, and willing to pursue dreams of mine and not shun people and opportunities that could benefit me. There are a few things. And uh, one of those things was the journaling, pursuing friends who were in better places than me, pursuing partners who were healthier in love than me, and um, therapy, man. Going to therapy, you know, and there's a difference between therapy and empathy, okay? A lot of people are paying X amount of dollars per hour to get empathy. But therapy is different. You go to a therapist, you spend months sometimes just uncovering layers of shit you weren't even aware of. And that therapist is giving you an objective ear and an objective perspective that you may not have considered. And those little one hour or 15 minute sessions give you some great aha moments. Some great aha moments. And, you know, I 
uh, provide links. I try to. They should be there. I'm going to go look and make sure, but if not, I'll put make sure to put it in this video. Or you can just add. You know what you can do? You can go to PetRequest.com and um, you can just ask me for, uh, you know, when you sign up, you can just ask me for links because I always try to provide links to online therapy because therapy really helped me. And I'm going to give you a quick example of how it helped me. The first therapist I went to wasn't very good. Um, she was trying to talk about the things she thought I wanted to talk about. But she wasn't really addressing me. And quite often when I bought up things about myself, she'd somehow spin them around the things about her. And the first time I went to that thing, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that again, but all right, cool. But then I went back a second time and it happened again and I was like, ah. But literally just having that experience, it, it, it shut down about 40%, 30, 30, 40% of my negative internal dialogue. Shut down about 40, 30, 40% of it. Because I'd suddenly got this understanding that, wow, I can sit in a room across from an objective person and speak out loud. This person's gonna allow me to hear myself share their two cents without being judgmental or harsh or critical. And then I'm gonna walk away with no strings attached. As long as I pay before I leave. And I was like, damn, that calmed me so much. And then I found the right therapist and that really helped. And then I moved on to another therapist after a couple of years and that helped. And I, moved on. And I just kept, I keep, I keep doing therapy. Um, and so I would say to anyone who hasn't had the experience, one, you make sure that the therapist you're seeing is challenging you. Two, you make sure that you're not confusing empathy for therapy or sympathy for therapy. And three, you got to do the homework. You've got to do the homework. So think of therapy as you getting an opportunity to apologize. Remember I said that we talk about how I said we talk about like we creating the survival personality the minute we're convinced that we're not enough. Think about this. You created a new personality. So that six year old boy who was told that he wasn't deserving of love got left behind and you took off with this new persona. You took off with your new ditty. Six-year-old boy still back there believing that he ain't worth nothing. You got him tucked back here. And you doing your ditty. You know what's crazy? Therapy is like the opportunity to go back and apologize to that little boy, that little girl, and say, I'm sorry for abandoning you. And these are the reasons that I did it. This is what I didn't know. This is what I know now. I got you, you're gonna be okay, things are different, I'm gonna make sure of it, you're gonna be safe. Therapy kind of helps you do that in a real way and it can be life-changing. Um, so, you know, we're coming up on an hour of this and I don't wanna drag it out too much but I just wanna say, if you can, please um, subscribe to the channel, uh, share, uh, like the video, all these things make a difference. And, um, you know, give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. You're not broken. You're just wired a certain way. You just gotta rewire things. And I have personally found Choosing the behavior that honors the greater good in the moment of crisis repeatedly really helped to rewire me. It really helped. Repeatedly, when I felt those triggers to just, I'm going to go this route. I know it feels intuitive, but I'm going to go the counterintuitive way. 
over and over and over and over again. It really helps to change uh, the way you deal with the trauma you've experienced throughout your childhood. Um, and that right there, my friends, is pretty much everything that I didn't get to say in the video. But the video covers a bunch of stuff that I wish I could say now. But I don't want to drag this out. But the video is only 10 minutes long. But I, you know how I do it. I do it really fast and whatnot. So my parents need to hear this. The cold coat said, they don't listen to me. Man, you ain't going to never get your parents to listen to you. I can't get my parents to listen to me. My, my mom listened to me for nothing. I gave up on it. Um, so moving through here, I'm going to start looking at people's comments. And if anyone has a question about my me or my childhood or whatever or my my relationship or whatever see if I can hit you if I can get with you there's so many people who can't afford this type of therapy or advice you really provide such an uplifting service Shannon thank you that's why I do this um, it means a lot and again I'm just really looking at myself looking at you know the mistakes that I still make you know um, it'd be a, you know I've been on the planet a half a century I got to share something. I got to pass something along. Um, I want the therapy to be heard and get an honest opinion from someone who would be impartial. Lynn, that's as slick as it gets. That's what it, well articulated shit. Damn, this was needed. I appreciate your thoughts. Words and ability to express yourself. Yes, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your thoughts, words, and ability to express yourself. That's beautiful, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Uh, Jordan, listen to this, y'all. Jordan, uh, Jordan Panasuk says, pursuing friends is something I regret not taking seriously earlier. Now, as a 36-year-old, time goes by too fast, and then you haven't talked to buddies in eight to 10 years. Facts. Because we're all so pressed for time these days, and there's so many distractions Who's making time for someone or who's prioritizing someone who doesn't, isn't willing to prioritize them? Who? Not me. I just did a live on Facebook and my, one of my closest friends of all time, been known as brother since 89, he would just go through periods where he'd just write me off. Wouldn't hear from him, wouldn't return my texts. I used to, I used to go, he'd, get to, he'd have his daughters on, on, uh, on the weekends. I'd go to his house pull him out of the bed, take him and his daughter every weekend, fishing, camping. I just wanted his daughter to have some kind of experience, right? That's how tight we were. And there would just be periods where dude would just kind of write me off. And then he'd be like, man, you know me, you know how I am. And I fell in love with someone, became a stepdad, and these children became my priority. And my brother had two baby girls and all of a sudden we had our own compound and our own family and truth is I love that dude but he's not a priority in my life anymore and no hard feelings I understand we all deal with our issues and our trauma but um it's just relationships require effort on both sides. And again, don't forget what I said. I learned this. If you want a great book, there's a book titled Seven Principles to Making Marriage Work by John Gottman. And one of those principles that I learned, a couple's therapists gave me that book when I was uh, married and um, when I was going through my divorce. And it was, uh, one, of, one of those was allowing your partner to influence you. Same goes for your friendships, you know? So um, I hope I hope y'all take heed to Jordan's words because I think they're important. Shannon, there are so many people, oh, oh I already read Shannon's. Um, uh, your approach is very simple and humble. That's what uh, drug me to follow your page. Keep it that way. I will, Ronell, I, I tell you what, I, I, I tell you what, what that's about, Ronell. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, there's a lot of, I'm going to be real, man, the, 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 the world is very toxic right now with gurus. Um, a lot of people professing to be gurus and they're upselling people, buy this, get that, buy this, get that, buy this, get that. And so they're kind of taking you on down this rabbit hole 
that ends up getting more and more expensive but not necessarily helping you to attain more and more fulfillment. And, you know, they got a lot of fancy language and, you know, they've clearly achieved a lot of success doing so. And, you know, America tends to respond well to people who appear to be uh, affluent, but it's like, um, I come from a place where uh, when I was a kid, I couldn't afford to buy that $2,700 course. Even if you gave it to me for 50% off, I couldn't afford to buy it. So I probably wasn't going to ever see, hear, or listen to what you had to say. So for me, growing up and trying to figure out my own shit, I realized that I needed things to be practical. I needed things to make sense. And I don't think that they're hard to understand. They're hard to execute. And that's on you and me. And that's all we need. We need tools that we can apply immediately. It's just a choice of when we want to apply them. I don't need the fancy hoopla. I don't need you, you know, to, to have me pay $3,000 to come to your seminar. I've done seminars, I've done workshops, I've done therapy, I've done, I've done it all. And I just come to realize that when it really boils down to it, a lot of people are repeating the same things in different ways. And now it's become this online business of selling hope. I don't have anything for sale. This is about practicality and affording people the insight that I wish I had 30 years ago. Affording people the insight that isn't offered in communities like the ones that I grew up in. That's what that's about. So thank you for saying that, it really means a lot. Um, so, someone, so here's another one. Y'all ready for this one? It says, Damn, oh, oh, listen to what, there's some good stuff here, hold on. Uh, thank you so much, thanks for sharing your experiences, inner child work. Ho'opono, opono, I, I, I know what that means. Thank you, Sarah, thank, uh, thank you, M. Lynn. My mom's favorite words are, I don't wanna hear it, 100%, and she means it, she doesn't wanna hear it. That means I'm not interested in seeing that. It's an aspect of me. It's the truth. Um, this dude bakes. Thanks. Thank you, fam. Uh, so there, there's a lady here named uh, Matisha, Matisha Wilson. Damn, this was needed. I appreciate your thoughts. Oh, I already read that. Shelley, I'm in transition between therapists now, and I really think I'm about to have a growth spurt. Beautiful. I ain't mad at you. Very smart that you're seeking out therapy. Um, Latoya Ward, very true, great job, Romney. Thanks so much for this. Oh, that's Latoya, what's up, y'all? That's the home girl, follow Latoya, y'all. I think all the dudes need to go follow Latoya. Uh, she's in my movie, Prison Logic. I got a movie coming out very soon, J July 10th. Um, check that out, please. It's called Prison, Purpose Over Prison, and it's hilarious, about an ex-convict who gets out of prison and wants to be a motivational speaker. Y'all gonna think I'm making fun of this whole guru phase we going through, but I'm not. Um, uh, Sarah, I hear you, I really do. Resisting fight and flight, okay. Moving on, oh man, I've had those friends, energy suckers, yeah, you gotta be careful of that. And quite often we're choosing them to feel significant. Um, so M, after recognizing that you needed to adjust your behavior and perceptions, how did you trust yourself in an intimate relationship again? Um, well, there's a couple of things. You can only do so much work on your own. The truth of the matter is, is that people need people whether we wanna believe it or not. It's just that the way that I did it, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say about things that I believe helped me. So remember when I was saying how how a person looks on paper isn't as important to me as how a person look how a person lives on purpose? Well, part of that was me for the first time really sitting down and writing out, okay, I know what I want. What do I need? And I can't let my wants influence my needs. I need to really look at what, what what's needed here. I need role models for the children in my family. I needed someone who was healthy with love. I needed someone who was uh, in good standing with their primary caregivers. I needed someone who was 
crystal clear on, on her purpose and was actually living that purpose. You know, I, I, I fell for a woman who is extremely passionate about helping kids with special needs and she's a speech pathologist for kids with special needs. And when I met her, she was completing college. And I was like, she literally had two kids, you know, a teen, you know, she'd really had two kids, one of which is a teenager now, and put herself back in school. She used to say she felt so old in school. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, what I did was I made that list and that list became boundaries. I need people who don't do these things. And that list of boundaries is kind of how I chose my next mate. We've been together five years. I ain't gonna lie, it's probably one of the more fulfilling relationships, and yet and still, I was still extremely resistant to it for a lot of reasons. Uh, becoming a stepdad is a huge step. Um, but, you know, over this last year, I think I've really grown to appreciate and truly fall in love with the person I chose. I just chose it for all the right reasons, and it's just adapting to not needing to be self-destructive. And so, in regards to trusting myself, as you asked, I just kind of felt a little bit of confidence in being really honest with myself about what I needed. And don't laugh, because prior to sitting down and really looking at myself like that, I thought I needed a perfectly round ass. Perfectly round ass. I thought I needed, keep it, just keeping it 100, I thought I needed like, uh, I thought I needed big titties. I, 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 re I really did. And like, I needed like a really flat athletic stomach and shit. I, thought I needed her to be 5'10". Like, I'm not fucking around. This is shallow shit. I've never written this down. But those are the things that I pursued. You get what I'm saying? That's what I wanted. But when I got to looking at myself, what's going to be the most healing? What's going to be the most helpful? I started looking at what I needed. Once you start getting that honest with yourself, there's a, there's a, there's a confidence that comes with that. Oh, shit, I'm being real with myself. I'm being real with myself and 90% of people in the world right now. And so it doesn't mean that I was supposed to go into this relationship and be perfect. I've fucking been an asshole in and out of this relationship. I'm a lovable asshole. I'm a lovable asshole. But you know, I feel like I'm still growing up in this relationship. And um, it's fulfilling, man. It's fulfilling. It's very different from any relationship I've had before. Um, and so, if baby, if you're watching, I love you. I love you with everything in my heart. I love you. I don't, I don't know why you put up with people like me, but I love you. Uh, so moving right on, moving right on. I hope I answered that question. Let me know. If, give me, let me know if I answered your question. By the way, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> black folks need black therapists. Most of them can help us more because they know our experience. You know, Lynn. Um, I would agree with you, but because of the fact that I've had multiple, for me, and everybody's different. You know, and I, I don't know, maybe my perspective is different because I grew up in a West Indian family. My daddy was Trinidadian, and my dad was tr Trinidadian and Venezuelan. My mom's Trinidadian. Maybe I have a different perspective, but keeping it 100, um, I've gotten amazing break, I've had amazing breakthroughs with uh, Jewish, Christian, Jewish and Christian therapists. Um, I've had amazing breakthroughs with Indian therapists, uh, black therapists, uh, 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 white therapists, uh, Hispanic therapists, Asian therapists. I've had amazing breakthroughs with all of them. Um, and all genders, male and females, have just conked me over the head like, damn, thank you. So, um, you know, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I hear you, and I think that there's some truth to that. Um, 
But I don't want to walk into, and honestly, I don't want to walk into, I, my first therapist made that mistake. I don't want to walk into a therapist's office and have them think they know my experience. Nope, I want a clean slate when I walk into the office of a therapist. That's, that's my opinion, okay? I'm not a consultant, I'm not a life coach, I'm not a therapist, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm a jackass. I've made so many mistakes. And so based on where I am in my journey right now, over the last 20 years of therapy, 20 years of therapy, that's what I've gathered. I don't know if, 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 if that's right or wrong, just based on my personal experience. I have found that good information uh, is wherever you find it. And that truth is inspiring no matter where it comes from. That's for me. Um, moving right along, my man here, uh, DS, DSB Business. I appreciate the valuable insight and you understand people like us who seek sound guidance and advice but don't really have the means or any good places to obtain it. Boom. Um, I think I, I think you might have just carved me out a niche on, on YouTube. My channel might be successful after all. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Legacy404.com. How can I get a role in your next project? Just have your agent submit you to whatever it is because I don't even know what my next project is with this quarantine thing. Nicer. I protect my energy and that's why I limit time scrolling through Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really I don't really mess with Facebook. I find it to be a breeding ground for uh, negativity. In fact, I created an app called The Pep. Can I, will y'all indulge me for a minute? Let, let me see. Is it okay if I show y'all an app that I created? And I want to make it really clear. I created the app for myself. This app isn't an app where I was like, yo, everybody get on my app. I created for myself. People have been asking me to use it, and I've been like, you know what? It's on my phone, but I don't know. I don't know if y'all could use it. So I went to the guy that helped me develop it, and I said, yo, can we make this available to other people? He said, sure, we can. And so we've started doing that. So if you look at my phone, can you? How do you? Oh, I know what I got to do. Tell me. Let me see if this is right. Okay. How many of y'all see that bell right there? You see that bell? That's my app. Um, it's called Pep Pager. And what it does is it kind of turns all my social media platforms into one big platform. So Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. So what it does is if I have something that I, if you, let's say you follow me on Facebook, right? Um, if I post something that I think is important to Facebook, Facebook's only going to notify 1% to 1.6% of my following. So what I got to do is I got to notify everybody that follows me myself. And this app allows me to do that and say, yo, I just posted this or I'm going live and it'll go to everyone who's following me on Facebook. If like when I had my Tijuana Jackson channel um, and the whole PewDiePie thing blew up with Adpocalypse, they shut, you know, they, they stopped notifying people of uh, my Tijuana Jackson posts. They, they demonetized all my friggin' videos uh, because, you know, they wanted to shut down everything controversial to preserve their relationships with the people who were buying these big ads on YouTube. So I was like, wow, it's amazing how these platforms can either censor or shut you down by a flipping, just by a change in policy or change in algorithm. So I created this so that I could notify people directly myself. And um, people are digging it and want to use it for themselves. And so I'm like trying to get it ready. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to get it ready so that I can let more people use it. We wasn't ready. We wasn't prepared for that. But it's cool. It allows you to schedule messages. I can schedule messages on there. So like if I know my video is going to launch at 7 a.m. on Tuesday, I can program that in there to notify everybody that follows me on YouTube to notify them. You know, um, in this way, in the event that YouTube or Facebook has a change in policy or algorithm, it doesn't prevent me from communicating with you. And people go, well, why don't you send emails? Well, two things. Emails have horrible click-through and open ratios, one. And two, I find email so damn invasive. Or evasive. Evasive. Invasive? Evasive. And I also, 
I've been doing text messaging for four years, and it's like that too. People don't know this, but every five new five hundred uh, uh, followers you get, you get a new number when you do the text messaging thing. So people are always like, "Who this?" I just don't need to be up in people's personal space. And so what's beautiful is from my app, when you get the message, right? Let's say so. So here's the message that I got. Rather than scrolling through all that toxicity on Facebook, I got this message right here that says, "Yo." I just posted something, go check it out. And then when I follow the link, it just takes me right to it. You know what I'm saying? So now, I'm not dealing with all the drama, I'm just going to the positive shit that I choose to follow on the path. You get it? You get what I'm saying? I don't know if that makes sense. How did I articulate that, y'all? I wasn't ready for that. How did, how did I articulate that? Someone said, found it, found what? Okay, sorry, getting back on track. Um, but yes, nicer, I don't really be dealing with that Facebook drama. Um, so I would like to hear your thoughts on being a stepfather. Oh my God, man, who are you? Robert Davis, damn it, I'm putting your name next to this. Robert Davis, being a stepfather. Dude, that's gonna be a video for show. And you know I come with, with facts. Um, okay, moving right along here. Thank you, Robert, for that idea. I'm gonna have to do that later. Uh, our, uh, Matisha Wilson, were there things about her that were on your don't list but fulfill the other needs? I didn't have a don't list. I simply had, I need a person Oh, I know what you mean. Like things, are you saying like things that like, I, I, I can't tolerate this, I can't. I didn't, I didn't really have that. And no, it was like, I was like, this is gonna sound horrible, but I was like, I need a person with a strong sense of purpose and I need them to be active in that sense of purpose. They need to be, I need to be clear about what community they are working to serve. Hers was obviously children with special needs, 100%. I was like, I am not opposed to a woman having children. Um, I need her to have a very loving relationship with her family. I need to know, I need to see, I need to. I need a woman who's kind of like very, who can be calm, because I can be a hothead. So I needed a woman who could be calm and objective and um, set that example for me. Um, I needed a woman who was loving and nurturing because I never had that really in a mom. You know, my mom was pretty loving, you know, in, um, in my very, very, very young years, you know, but as her and my dad started spiraling out of control, they were very absent parents. And so uh, it wasn't until my dad got stuck with us that he became like a grown up and he was not a very affectionate person unless he had drank. So I needed to be in the company of someone who was nurturing. Um, but if I had, but you know, I, like, like my don'ts were I couldn't be with a substance abuser um, wasn't interested uh, in anyone who was not growth oriented. So the truth is, no, there was nothing on my don't list. No, nah, real talk. No, nope. got exactly what I needed and resisted it for at least two years in the process of having it. It's crazy, you know. And it really makes me realize, like, relationships. People talk about finding love. You don't find love. You don't fucking find love. You build that shit. You build it real fucking talk. Um, you are not strong enough. You are not uh, uh, you are not stronger than Mother Nature. You're not stronger than the universe. You can't you can't arm wrestle with God. It's like you are being put on a path and in the company of people and in the presence of people that are intended to help you heal whether you like them or not. You ain't strong enough to to shake that, that's just the way it is. And so the key is to, to learn from it and make that list of boundaries that most of us never even knew or heard of in our household and go from there. And then that one might not work out, 
you got a few more things to improve upon on a list of boundaries. And to me, the best list of boundaries comes from really identifying yourself and seeing all of the weaknesses. And it makes you humble because you go, damn, somebody's dumb enough to be with me? What is wrong with her? Damn, you gotta love and appreciate her. Damn, you gotta love and appreciate her. Because when you really see yourself, you realize that we as human beings are heavily flawed. No one's ideal. No one. Uh, moving right along. Uh, you did answer my question. Thank you very, very, very much. I can help others gain clarity, but I periodically have a difficult time with trusting myself to not be what I was. I understand what you're saying. And I do think that these, you know, just listing off boundaries can be key. Like I said, my dad was an alcoholic. I'm not dating no substance abusers. I don't, if you, even if you smoke, you just smoke cigarettes. I ain't fucking with you. That's for me. Um, man, your vision, honestly, and execution is going to yield great results for you and all the people you will reach. This is needed. Shelley, thank you. Receive with love. Okay, M. Um, okay, so here's something that says, let me get this right. It says, uh, Jamaican me that. I to the world them you them. No, I'm playing. It says I'm Jamaican by the um by the by. <laughs> we all have something to teach each other as long as we're welcome, as long as we come from a place of genuine care for our fellow human. I completely agree. I completely agree, sister. And that's them is facts, you know. And that's what people like. I'm not just sitting here saying this is the way it is. I'm really sitting here being open to all perspectives. And as you can see, I'm including people's comments in this conversation. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. What the hell, folks? Y'all better be subscribing to a brother channel and watch that video, 10 Signs of an Unhealthy Relationship. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, if you're not open to perspectives, what are you doing? Are you truthfully on a, pattern, a, a path of trying to learn? Um, the cold coach, the client coach relationship has to be aligned no matter the race or ethnicity. Agreed. I'm with the cold coach on that. There just needs to be an alignment in like it's that there we go. And by and then and correct me if I'm wrong, coach, but when I say in alignment, meaning uh, that for me, I would interpret alignment as I need the coach to truthfully understand what it is I am aspiring to in my own happiness and I need the coach or I need the therapist to really understand what that means. I don't want the therapist to have a vision for me. That's like the same thing that I do when I date someone for their potential. No, I'm not paying you to come up with an image for me. It's already there. I need you to help me tap into my more authentic self. I need you to help me heal. I need you to help me see myself more objectively. Because when you do that, you humble. You get really humble and you become grateful for the people that are willing to love you. I think that's what the cold coach means by alignment, but just wanted to reiterate. Uh, were you ever a cheater? What made you stop cheating in your relationship? This pisses me off. Alicia, you did not watch my video why I cheated. You are not subscribed to my channel and you need to be subscribed to my channel and hit the notification bell right now. Or you can follow me on the pep. Just go to peprequest.com. Um, I cheated once. It wasn't chronic. I didn't cheat over and over. I cheated once. And I regretted it. I told on myself. It ended our relationship to exact revenge. She went out and cheated right away and let my ego know how it felt. And it was horrible. And um, I never did that again. I never did it again because I hurt someone who really cared about me. But I also never did it again because the truth is the relationship was over four years before we, three years prior to us ending it. And if I just had been a man, I would have stepped up and said that. But I didn't have that, I didn't have enough character to do something like that. And so as a result of that, I cheated, just like my dad. And it destroyed our relationship, just like my dad, just like my mom. So, um, Seeing the trauma of seeing me repeat these patterns was enough for me to be like, I don't want to be like that. That begets what I grew up experiencing. We don't want that, right? Um, and so did I, I hope I answered your question. Oh God, are we talking about cheating? No, we're not really talking about cheating. 
uh, agreed. I just think that they have a deeper understanding of where we come from. You are entitled to your opinions. I appreciate you. Uh, no doubt. Uh, you know what? I, I truthfully believe that, you know, people who can genuinely understand your history or, you know, the trajectory of your existence in the United States of America can make a huge difference, without a doubt. Uh, D DSB business, how do we download the PEP? All right, so check it out. Um, you know, like I said, I wasn't ready for people to want to use the PEP. So I don't really know. If you want to be a guinea pig on the PEP, it's available uh, to Android users. If you go to peprequest.com, I'll put you on to that. Peprequest.com and just request an invite. And if you're down to be a guinea pig, I'll get it over to you. Uh, that's it. Yes, show us the app. Oh, yeah, show us the app. And I, I did. I showed you the app, right? Let me see. Um, so let me go to the Google store. Maybe I can find it. How the hell do I do this? How the hell do I do that? Uh, so let me, maybe if I just show you what this looks like, you'll, you'll, you'll know where to go find it. Uh, my apologies, y'all, for being so slow. Thank you for being interested in the app. Uh, continue. Okay. So. Um, do y'all see that? If you see that logo right there in the Google Play Store, or just go to peprequest.com. It's easier if you just go there. You go to the Google Play Store, um, and uh, I'll do my best to get it to you because we need some guinea pigs. We need some, we need some Android guinea pigs right now. Uh, moving right along, Frank White, thanks for sharing. Frank White? I know Frank White. Thanks for sharing the app. It takes a lot of self-awareness to face your flaws and better yourself. Man, it's one thing to understand it intellectually. It's another thing to put it into practice, trying to do it every day. Romney man, been following your career since the college boys. Damn, if y'all don't know, Legacy 404 is talking about the fact that I was a rapper back in the day. Yes, I had a hit record. I had the number one rap song on the Billboard charts. Facts. Got knocked to number two by Arrested Development, but them is facts. I've uh, been following you since the college boys, watching you grow has been great. Your advice from a jackass videos have been exactly what I needed at this time. Judgment video, 100%. Yes, I got another judgment video coming out too, man. Thank you so much for that, fam. M, I'm subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, M. Um, thank you, Sistrin. I will say that. Thank you. Uh, you know, my family's Trinidadian, so, like, I get so much love when I go to... I used to go to Jamaica all the time. My, my, my ex was, was Jamaican. I go to Jamaica all the time, and uh, they just loved... They just loved me being Trinidadian over there. They'd be like, you know how they have the... Cooking on the side of the road, they open up those... Um, they have the barrels that they cook the fish with the okra in. And I'd be looking at, what? Give me the big one, boy. Give me the big one. No, no, I want the big one. Give me that one. No, no, no. The smaller one, sweet. Give me the small one. I'd be doing that. they be rolling. Lots of free weed in Jamaica. Um, so, DBS, right on. I found the Pet Pager app in Google Play, but I think it's for hosts. Um, I'm not sure. It might not be available to you. Maybe you can download it and install it. Let me know. If you can, please follow me on it, and I'll show you how to use it. Ursula Kearns. How do you get out of an unhealthy relationship when you've been in it for over 30 years? Man, you know, I am a firm believer that if you come from an environment like I come from, if you come from places where we come from, we tend to gravitate to the familiar even if it's sinking like a brick, even if it's to our detriment. There are these cognitive biases that we have. And so with these cognitive biases, there's one in particular that I can't think of, which is kind of like, a, like risk aversion, but it's not risk aversion, it's something else, where you're so afraid to take a chance on something else, right? Like if you have $10 and maybe you take that $10 and you invest it in something that could earn you $20, you're so afraid because it's not because of your fear of losing the $10. It's because you're conditioned to interpret any deviation from what you're accustomed to, any deviation from what you consider the norm, any deviation from what you consider comfortable as a loss, any deviation from what we're used to, we interpret as a loss. And as a result of that, we rarely seek gains. You get what I'm saying? 
And so, <clears throat> that mentality stays with us in everything. Relationships, investing, business opportunities. But the truth of it is, is that much of life management is the management of risks. And so, I can't bring myself to ever tell anyone to get out of a relationship or how to get out of a relationship. But I do think it's important to assess the pros and cons and be very honest with yourself. I genuinely don't believe that two vibrations that don't honor one another can coexist. I don't think, I don't think it's possible. And so, uh, you, me, everyone in this world, when we're making those risks, when we're taking those risks, when we're making those changes, the goal is to mitigate risk, I understand, to mitigate that possibility of great loss. But sometimes just kind of putting on paper the pros and cons, objectively, and not just in one sitting, but maybe over time, really helps you become more objective about what you want, where you are. You know what I mean? Um, that's, my, that's my two cents. Um, someone said, this is an excellent discussion. I'm gonna share, uh, gonna share a few long paragraphs tomorrow on LMT. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Um, so moving right along, someone says, I hope I answered your question, Ursula. Uh, moving right along, what about iOS? W we haven't quite submitted to iOS just yet, and we will be submitting to iOS soon, but if you want to know when, go to PetRequest.com, and then once you get on PetRequest.com, we'll notify you of all of it as soon as, we, soon as we're up on iOS. Uh, you may not be a life coach. Uh, this is from N N Nkosi. Nkosi says, you may not be a life coach, but your Tijuana Jackson videos, as well as advice from a jackass, has been highly instrumental in helping my personal growth for the last eight years. Appreciate you very much. Thank you, Nkosi. Thank you very much. That is bomb. I'm taking that to heart. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and share. You played MC Hammer too, right? I did play MC Hammer. I really did. Um, damn. Uh, that's a long time. Praying for you, sis. 30 years is a long time. Um, this is an excellent discussion. I'm going to share it. Thank you very much. Nice, sir. I've read that one already. $10 to $20. It's a aha moment. Bam. Thank you. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. When you were saying the, ri the, the risk, right? Any deviation from what we're comfortable. When I was saying any deviation from what is comfortable, we automatically interpret it as a loss, right? <clears throat> that's a lot. That's what keeps a lot of us living unfulfilled and insulated lives, right there. And I'm glad it clicked for you because that meant a lot to me. Thank you very much, Ronell. Thank you. Um, Trini talks sweet and Yadi's chat hard. It's so true. And can both cook. Yeah, you are, you are so right. Cook you back to life and dance you to glory. You are 100 percent on point right there, M. Um, you ain't a real man in my family. So you know how to cook. And now Alicia. Alicia says, thank you. One more question. Have you ever dealt with a passing of a loved one while in a relationship? Uh, how did you deal? So I want to make sure that I'm getting this right. So like a passing of a loved one, mean like my dad died while I was married? Is that what you're referring to? Or like, or the person that I'm dating passes away? I've never had someone that I was dating pass away. Um, the pet request... So, okay, I, 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 um, so, so I, I just want to be clear on your, on your question here. Um, uh, how, do you, how did I deal? Yeah, I, I, my father died while I was married, and unfortunately my wife was not emotionally or psychologically present to be supportive at all during that time. Um, and she just hadn't really, she hadn't really grown up yet, you know. And... Um, Neither had I, honestly. And so, all I can tell you is, is my dad was half his weight, wearing a diaper, and being needed, I needed to pick him up and carry him to the toilet. 
and change his diaper and all that stuff. And to be honest with you, it was an opportunity to be fit there for him in a way that I didn't know that I could be there for anyone. And it was actually a great opportunity. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't be with him the whole time, but um, I got to be with him for a while and it definitely uh, showed me parts, aspects of myself that I wasn't even aware were there. And as far as my relationship goes, uh, our, my, my marriage ended shortly thereafter. So um, I'm not sure if I'm even answering your question. Moving very long. Moving right along. My man said, pet, oh, no, no, the pet request notifications via email. No, no, they're via the app. They're via the app. So what will happen is that app will just buzz you and let you know, boop, boop, you got a little notification pop. And then when you open it, let me see if I can show you. So right, so this is me. So what'll happen is you get this notification, this thing will buzz your phone, and then you'll go right here, and those are your notifications, you see them? And then when you click a notification, whoops, when you click a notification, it just takes you right to whatever that notification was linked to. You see what I'm saying? Um, I hope I'm doing it justice. Uh, yeah, and so if I wanna send a notification, to let's say all the people who follow me on Instagram, right? I click that right there. And I can, you know, it, it automatically loads my Instagram page, but maybe I want to send them to a specific link on my page. I just put a little message, tell them what it is. I put that link in there. I can schedule it if I want to. So if I want to, I can say, you know, I can say, uh, get, uh, I want to, I can pick you know, what hour, what day I want to send it, you know, that kind of thing. And then I can schedule it or whatever the hell, you know, that kind of thing. Am I helping? Uh, Momo Jordan, good question. What was the question? So. Uh, I was so disappointed in my wife when she said that she would take the million and not the 10,000 a month. I was hurt. Oh, is that the question from my video? <laughs> um, everybody's different. You know what I mean? Some people think they have all the knowledge that they need right now. Me looking back now, I'd be like, give me that 10 grand a month and I'm by myself time to invest it wisely. I think now at this age, I would take a lump sum of money in a heartbeat. I already know what to do with it. She literally said the exact reason she didn't trust the money would keep coming, which was my reason. Damn, y'all be watching my videos for real. Thank you so much for that, Legacy404.com. Um, so, Momo, what's the question about parent passing away? Yep, did, or did I, I hope I answered the question. I experienced the same when my dad passed. My guy at the time could care less. Needless to say, he got canceled. Yeah. That was the other thing. You 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 want mo emotional support when it matters most, especially in yeah. And so, I got all that now, man. I'm 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 in good hands, man. I feel so taken care of. I'm sadly spoiled. It's embarrassing how spoiled I am that I don't even tell. I don't tell folks what really goes down in my household, but I'm spoiled. It's craziness. <laughs> Deal breaker. Sounds like a great subject to explore. What do you think? Emotional support from a loved one. I'll put it on the list. Emotional support in times of loss. How about that? Boom. Look into that. Um, wow. Anyone who can't be there for, to offer you support and condolences when you lose a loved one isn't, isn't there for you at all, no matter how they dress it up. Oh, about parenting passing away. You're, oh, God, I got so much to say about my dad passing away. Oh, woo. Let's see, parent passing away. Yes, I will talk on that one. Um, but yeah, you know, me and my ex-wife, we talk all the time now. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about, she, all, she, she always apologizes about was not being there for me in that time and her words were she just she just hadn't grown up yet you know she just wasn't aware she didn't realize how spoiled she was and she was trying to be a better person now and one of the things that she realized was that she just 
kind of emotionally abandoned me during that period in my life. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that while we were married, check this out, her grandmother was diagnosed with a tumor behind her right eye and her father was diagnosed with hepatitis C. And so she, because she had had some shenanigans happen uh, with at the border, she'd been flagged at the border, she couldn't get back over the border. But I could. So I was flying back and forth to see her dad and her grandmother and she couldn't. And so we rushed into marriage so that we could um, make it possible for us both to, to travel, you know? Because we were, we were already engaged. And so we just accelerated the date of our marriage so that she could get over the border. And honestly, shortly after my parents died, um, her father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He, he took a case study to treat his hepatitis C. And I don't know 100% for sure, but it seems like it may have resulted in him coming down with Alzheimer's. And her, her grandmother passed away. And those losses brought her around to having realizations that she might not have had otherwise, you know? And um, it just, real talk just made us closer because I knew what loss was like too. Um, so that's a great, that's a great, it's a great, great topic. And thank you all for uh, putting up with me. I just wanna, I wanna say something. Um, please do me a favor and check out my latest video, comment on it. It's called 10 Signs of an Unhealthy Relationship, of an Unhealthy and Destructive Relationship. A lot of the things in there I didn't even know were unhealthy and destructive. Um, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. My name is Romney Malco. I am the founder of The Pep, the People's Empowerment Platform, and you are watching Another episode of Advice from a Jackass. And this concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Uh, it's a brilliant video. I've shared it with my friends and family. Thank you, M. Going over there. Thank you very much, Momo. Peace, big homie. Appreciate you nicer. Thank you, big homie. That's Ruth George, y'all. Um, I answered your question, by the way, Ruth, about needing to know people's phones and stuff. Robert Davis says thanks. Thank you. I hope all of you subscribe to the channel, by the way. Um, have a blessed evening, folks. Thank you, Kaya. You have a blessed evening as well. Keep doing great things. We'll be watching. Share, share them all going forward. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. So I'm going to be sending you notification through the PEP, and you got to let me know if it's working and what you like, think when you receive it, what could be better. Now that you got it on, now that you found it, I got, I, you know, I got to use it. Damn, I was really trying to avoid that. You might be the first um, person to actually download and use the app. Damn, scaring me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, D, um, DSB Business. Thank you, thank you, nicer. And Caribbean Girl Seven, share with my friends. Thank you. You guys are helping me and making me happy, man. And. Your words of, 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 I want y'all to know, man, your words of encouragement go a long way around here. Ain't nobody above encouragement, especially when it comes to stuff like this. Have a blessed evening, everybody.